Hi, this is Jeff Spence, your Math 120 instructor for the Community College of Denver, and this is our video lecture over Unit 7B, Combining Probabilities. So, uh, in 7A, your homework uh, was probability, but I would consider it basic probability. You know, you look at uh, the number of ways an event can occur out of the total possible outcomes, and you figure out a simple probability. Here we're going to combine probabilities where we look at mul probabilities of multiple events, and or multiple characteristics uh, from a single selection. So um, when we have uh, independent events, okay, when we have independent events, uh, the probability of the, f so two, two events are independent if the probability of one event is not affected by the outcome of the other event. So flipping coins, you know, every time you flip a coin, the coin doesn't have memory as far as if it came up heads or tails last time. So if you flip a head and uh, for your first flip, the probability of getting a head the second time is still one half. Okay, so um, so it basically independence means the probability is not affected by the outcome of some other event. So if we want to figure out the probabilities of multiple events, the probability of A and the probability of B, uh, consecutive events, we multiply their probabilities. So that's a key thing here. Anytime we ask for multiple events, more than one event, you multiply their probabilities. So there's a bunch of independent events. So maybe if we want to know the probability of rolling three sixes in a row with a single die. So three sixes in a row, that's three events. A six, a six, and a six. And so we're going to multiply three probabilities. Now the main thing is we need to make sure is is this probability independent each time? In other words, is it the same each time? And the answer is yes. When we roll a die, the the events are independent. The die does not have memory. If you roll a six the first time, it does not change the probability that it's still one six each time that you uh, one six probability that you will roll a six because there is one six out of six different numbers on a die. So you take 1 6 times 1 6 times 1 6. When you multiply fractions, you multiply across 1 times 1 times 1 over 6 times 6 times 6. And you get 1 over 2 16. Two events are dependent if the outcome of one affects the probability of the other event. So this is the opposite case. So, um, so uh, if we want to figure out the probability of those multiple events, then we still multiply but the probability for the second fraction is going to change based on the, the occurrence of the first event. So usually um, when we sample without replacement from a deck of cards or if we make a committees of people, usually when we're selecting people, we don't replace people. We don't want to select the same person each time. Or if we're making card hands, you know, usually we give out the cards and we don't put the card back in the deck. So that's when we sample without replacement. So this is an example where we select people. It says the three-person jury must be selected at random from a pool that has six men and six women. What is the prob probability of selecting an all-male jury? Well, once again, we're, we're asking for a three-person thing. So this means male, 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 which means we have three probabilities that we need to multiply. But they're not going to be the same each time. So the probability that the first juror is male is 6 out of 12 because there's 6 males out of 12 total. So then uh, assuming if we need a three-person jury that's male then the first person has to be a male so now there's only five men left among 11 people total so the probability that the second juror, juror is also male is 5 out of 11 and so on. And then the third juror since the first two were male there's now four males left out of 10. So the probability of getting three men in a row is 6 times 5 times 4 over 12 times 11 times 12 or 12 times 11 times 10 because we're have one less male and one less total uh, juror to select from. So that's a big difference between independent and dependent. The probabilities are the same in independent or they they don't change based on the occurrence of some event um, versus dependent where they do change. Okay, so when we select people or we're sampling without replacement, we don't put any of the items back then the, the probability changes as you go down the line. Then we have either or probabilities. So uh, with non over so with either or you have two possibilities. The, the events could be non-overlapping or they can be overlapping. 
So two events are non-overlapping if they cannot occur at the same time or together, like the outcome of a coin toss as shown at the right. So you can't get a heads and a tails at the same time. So anytime we have non-overlapping events and we want to know the probability of either or, we just add the probabilities. So the key thing is or means to add. Or always, always, always means to add the probabilities. So suppose you rose a sing roll a single die. What is the probability of rolling a 2 or a 3? Well, the probability of rolling a 2 is 1 6. The probability of rolling a 3 is 1 6 because there's one, that's one number out of 6. So we add the two probabilities and we get 2 6. This does reduce to 1 3rd, but uh, you don't, uh, we're just showing you how we got the answer here. So that shows the re reduction at the end. But a lot of events are actually overlapping, like when we have decks of cards and things like that, you'll have a lot of card examples. So remember, don't forget to look at your sample space sheet that I provided to you in D2L. It shows you all the numbers of the cards and all the suits. So two events are overlapping if they can occur together, like the outcome of picking a queen or a club, as shown to the right. There are four queens, one of which is actually a queen and a club, and then there are a bunch of other clubs, 12 other clubs. Okay, so this does have overlap. So whenever we have overlap, we add their probabilities, but what happens is if we, if we count the four queens and then the 13 clubs, I've actually counted this queen of clubs twice. So then we need to subtract off <coughs> the overlap. That's the part here, okay? If I count something twice, I need to subtract it off so that I only count it once. So it says, what is the probability that in a standard shuffle deck of cards that you will draw a five or a spade? So remember, this is just one selection, so we're not multiplying here. <coughs> That's if we want to select multiple cards, but this one says we draw a five or a spade. Well, these events overlap, so the probability of selecting a five, there are four fives out of 52 total cards. The probability of selecting a spade, there are 13 spades out of 52 cards. But there is a five of spades. The probability of a five of spades is that one card that we've counted twice here. We counted it here and we counted it here. So we need to subtract it off once so that we only count it once. So when we add fractions, remember, uh, the denominator stays the same as long as we have a common denominator. And we just add the numerators and subtract. So 4 plus 13 is 17. And then 17 minus 1 is 16. 16 out of 52 reduces to 4 out of 13. Um, okay, let me sh before we get to this at least once, let me show you a couple things in the calculator. So sometimes your homework will ask for the answer in reduced form. So that last answer was 16 divided by 52. And if you don't, if you're not very comfortable with reducing it, this, here's how you can do it in your calculator. 16 divided by 52, you can press, you can type in the fraction, press enter. It'll give you a decimal, and then if you want to reduce it, you can press math, and the first option is to convert to a fraction, and it will give you the reduced answer. Okay, so you can do four, it'll reduce that to 4 out of 13. So remember, anytime you want to reduce a fraction, you can just type it in. Actually, you can just type it in before you even press enter. You can write math convert to fraction, and it'll reduce it for you. Just a nice technique to use there. Okay, so uh, the at least once rule. So this is the last type of uh, combining probabilities. This is the most complicated one, the at least once rule. You have this formula in your formula sheet on the sample space, the one that I provided. Okay, so make sure that you uh, know where this is. It's in the lower right hand corner of your formulas. So anytime we want to figure out the probability of at least one event A in N trials, essentially at least one, at least one event means one and up, okay? So if we run, if I sample 10 people and I want to find at least one left-hander, that means one up to 10 left-handers out of my sample. So the way that we do this is we actually figure out the probability of zero people out of the 10, say zero left-handers, that's the not that event, and then we take it to the, end to the nth power. So here's our formula, let's use this here. So it's the bottom, bottom part that we're gonna use. So it says use the at least once rule to find the probability of at least one head when you toss three coins. 
In this case, the event A is getting heads on one toss. And for three coins, so we have three trials, n equals three. So the at least rule once tells us that if we follow at least one head in three tosses, is one minus the probability of not the head in three tosses. So that means we put the probability here of not a head and raise it to the third. So the probability of not a head is still one half. So we just raise that to one third. One minus uh, the probability of tossing a knot ahead is one half to the third power. Take one half to the third power and that's one eighth. And you get one minus one eighth is seven eighths. Here's another example. You purchase 10 lottery tickets for which the probability of winning some type of prize on a single ticket is one in 10. What is the probability that you will have at least one winning ticket amongst the 10 tickets? So we're sampling 10 tickets, so that's the number of trials. The probability of winning is 0.1 or 1 tenth, so the probability of not winning is 0.9 or 9 tenths. So to follow the rule, we want at least one win in 10 tickets, so that's 1 minus the probability of not winning to the 10th power. Well, winning, the probability of winning is 0.1, so the probability of not winning is 0.9, and since we're asking for 10 tickets out of, out of 10, we raise it to the 10th power. 1 minus 0 0.9 to the 10th power is 0.651. Let me show you that on the calculator. 1 minus uh, 0 0.9 to the 10th gives us that 0 0.651. Or if you had a fraction, you could do 1 minus the 9 divided by 10. That was an example here to the 10th power. Six five one. Okay, so keep in mind, anytime we have multiple events, we multiply probabilities. Whether they're independent or dependent, just depends on the situation. So independent usually is like rolling, uh, rolling die, flipping coins, events like that. The events that are dependent are when we sample from a deck of cards and we're not replacing it, or we're sampling people. Because usually, when we sample people, we don't select the same person more than once. So that would be dependent. Then you have your either or probabilities where you have to, you add, anytime you have the word or, you add them. Let me find that. Anytime you have an or probability, you add them. But then you have to make sure that if there's overlap or not. So if there is, you need to make sure you subtract off that overlap and you have those formulas in your formula sheet. And then we have the at least one problems. So good luck. We'll see you next time.